All right, folks, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at this Radio Oddity DB50. It's a dual band mobile radio with a detachable face. Uh, for the folks that are not in the know, this is a rebranded radio from Anytone, and it is the AT5888UV. Anyhow, what we're going to do today is we're going to connect this up to a spectrum analyzer, and we are going to test it for spectral purity. I did want to say that I was contacted by Radio Oddity, and they did send this radio to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. Okay, so for today's video, we're going to use a spectrum analyzer much like this one. This is the Siglin SSA3032X. Mine is an S. SA3021. The only difference is, is that this one has a wider bandwidth and the reason I'm showing you a picture of this one is because I couldn't find a good picture of mine. I wanted to quickly share a link to a website called Rapid Tables and this allows me to convert watts to dBm. The, this radio can put out up to 50 watts, at least that's what it's advertised at. So when I convert that to dBm it's 46.9 dBm. When we feed a signal into a spectrum analyzer, we need to make sure that we attenuate it to an appropriate level that can be handled by the spectrum analyzer. So what I've done is I've added 60 dB of attenuation to cancel this out and give me around negative 10 dB going into my spectrum analyzer, which it can handle for this particular test. And this is the setup that we are going to be using. So I have the radio itself connected up to my Astron power supply. And then the output of the radio comes in and goes through what I call the big ass attenuator. And that is the thing that looks like a dummy load on the left hand side of the screen. Coming out of that, I have back to back two 10 dB attenuators. Now the big ass attenuator can handle 100 watts, so it can handle the power output and it attenuates the signal 40 dB. And then each one of those 10 dB attenuators adds another. So we have 60 dB of total attenuation. And then you can see the coaxial cable comes out of those attenuators and goes into the RF input on the Sig Siglent Spectrum Analyzer. Not to bore anybody, but these are the rules from the FCC. And so the top one is what we're going to be doing for any signal that is over 25 watts. And basically it says that for any frequency between 30 and 225 megahertz, any spurious emissions must be 60 dB below the mean power of the fundamental. The fundamental is our transmitted signal. In this case, it's going to be 146.52 megahertz. And then the second one says for any transmitter having a mean power of 25 watts or less, so that would be our medium two and medium one and low settings, the mean power of any spurious emission supplied to the antenna transmission line must not exceed 25 microwatts which is negative 16.02 dBm, and we'll have a line marking that on our grid, on our spectrum analyzer, and it must be at least 40 dB below the mean power of the fundamental emission. Okay, so here's the remote control session of the spectrum analyzer, and a couple of things I wanted to point out. We do have our frequency configuration, and down here you can see the start and the stop up here. So we are gonna sweep from zero hertz all the way to 1.5 gigahertz. And I want to take a quick look at the amplitude. Here you can see a reference level offset of 60 dB to account for our attenuator. And the last thing is I want to go over to bandwidth. So our resolution bandwidth is set to 300 kilohertz. And that gives us a little bit lower noise floor. If you look at the screen here, the table or the graph, you can see we have a blue line. And that represents our 25 microwatts or negative 16.2. 02 dBm, which is a low cutoff threshold for transmissions below 25 watts. The blue line does not come into consideration for transmissions above 25 watts. And remember, this radio is a dual band radio, and that means that it transmits on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. For 2 meters, we are 144 megahertz through 148. And then for 70 centimeters, we are in the 440 megahertz range. So we are only going to be testing for two meter band because that is the only specification that applies for this particular radio. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my trace and then I'm going to set this for a max hold. And I do that so I don't have to keep transmitting the entire time. 
And so we have now captured two spikes. The one with marker number one is our fundamental transmission at 146.52 megahertz. And then the second one is a uh, marker number two, and that is actually for a harmonic. So while we're taking a look at this, I'm going to switch back over to amplitude. And we have a data table displayed here. So if you take a look at marker number one, it is running in at 36.9 dBm. The radio is set to low power. So 37 dBm is 5 watts. So that's about what we expect. And then marker number two is a delta marker to number one. And it is 45 dB below marker number one, which meets the first part of our criteria for success. But that is above that blue line. And that means that this radio does not pass the spectral purity test for two meter band. Now what I want to do is I want to come over here and I'm going to switch my Y axis to watts. And then you can see right here on the marker table, marker number one is 4.9 watts. And like I said, that's about what we expect. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our trace window and I'm going to turn max hold off. I'm going to put that to clear right. And then I'm going to change my power level to medium one. Actually medium two, I'm sorry. That's the next one up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to start transmitting and we're going to go ahead and do a capture, but I am going to change this back to max hold. And the sweep is just about finished. And what we can see here is that looking at the table below our amplitude, uh, we have 10.01 watts is what we expect for this particular power setting. If we take a look at marker number two, let's go back to amplitude and switch this over to dBm. And what we can see is, is that again is 40 dB below, which is good, but it's above the blue line. And at this power level, it would again be a fail. So let's go back to our trace. Let's turn this back to clear right. And then I'm going to set the radio for mid one, which is the next level up. And we've done that. I'm going to begin transmitting and I'm going to switch this back to max hold. And there we have our readings. And let's go over and again, this, you can see it's above the blue line. So it, it, it's a fail again. And let's go over to our amplitude window and we'll switch this to Watts. And we are at around 21.96 watts. So it's again below 25. So that's where that regulation comes in. And let's go back over to our trace. Let's turn off max hold. And then I'm going to set the radio to high power. Radio set for high power. I am now transmitting. Let me set this back for max hold. And you can see marker number one is at 47.39 watts. It's supposed to be at 50 watts. We may be hitting some attenuation with the setup that we have here that's not accounted for. But in any event, because we're above 5 watts, that means that our secondary fundamental needs to be 60 dB below marker number one. Once you're above 25 watts, that blue line does not take into consideration any longer. So let's go over to our amplitude. We'll switch our scale back to dBm. And then you can see that it is 57.57 dB below the fundamental, which again would not pass the criteria outlined by the FCC. Anyhow, that's going to wrap this video up. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I'd like to thank Radio Oddity for sending this to me for my consideration. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching.